we'll, we'll transition to questions if that's great, but um, know that uh, I appreciate your time this morning. I appreciate the chance to share that update and I appreciate being able to work with Councilmember Von Wolford to create a city that works for all of us. And so I'll toss it back to the council member is Stephanie. To Stephanie, thank God Stephanie's here. She solves all problems. Uh, <laughs> all righty, thank you so much, uh, Council Member Von Wolper and Mayor Gloria, for your remarks. Um, we'll be moving into the panelists' questions. Our first panelist is Eric Edelman. He's the chair of the Cal Carmel Mountain and Saber Springs Community Council. And so I'll hand it over to you, Eric. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, thank you, Council Member uh, Von Wilper. Thank you, Mayor Gloria, for uh, inviting us here today. It's good to see you. Um, my question has to do um, selfishly with, with Carmel Mountain Ranch and um, the amount of proposed infill development that's coming our way and, and frankly the amount of infill development that's already underway in other communities um, in District 5. And I'd, I'd like to know how can the city help us protect the character of our community with so much proposed high density development in a master plan community that's that's already seemingly at, at capacity and particularly as it relates to wildfires, which you just mentioned. Yeah, um, Eric, let me try and field this and if the council member wants to chime in, um, that, that that's great. Um, first off, thank you for your service to the community, uh, particularly leading uh, a community organization that is uh, sometimes a thankless task and I know it's not compensated. So thank you for what you do, Eric. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, to your specific question, um, you know, the only thing I know of for sure is that communities will change. Right? It, it just happens. You know, the, a business will close and someone else will go in. Change will happen. I think the, the point that you and I would agree on is that um, we should be in purposeful in trying to curate that change in a way that keeps what you love about your community and then welcomes changes that actually address, you know, deficiencies in your community that you care about. And new, new, new development can often do that can also do the opposite. And so that's the, that's the, what I'm hearing in your question is how do you get more of the good stuff that you like and how do you do it in a way that's inclusive of the community? Um, again, uh, hopefully uh, maintaining high level of quality of life, uh, eliminating some of the things uh, that you don't like. So the best way to do that is through a community plans and making sure that they're updated and reflective of community consensus. As I think you may know, Eric, many of our city's community plans are horribly outdated. Um, there has been a pickup over the last couple of years in updating these plans, but that those are years long processes. And often while you and your colleagues on the committee are working on those updates, uh, projects are coming in the door uh, that really aren't a part of that process. And so I think it's incumbent upon us to continue to update community plans uh, in a process that is swifter so that, that consensus is reflected. And so the community knows what community community com clearly communicates to everyone what the expectations are and that that is not the expectations of your community 25 years ago, but the concerns of your community today. Well, how are we gonna do that? Um, well, my administration is working uh, right now to try and find ways to make sure that those plan updates can go faster. Um, and what that generally means is the city has to do more of its fair share. Um, often what we are doing is putting the requirements for environmental clearance on these community plan processes, which means multiple years longer. Um, and is often technical to the point that it seems exclusive of community participation. There's nothing like talking about a, pro, a programmatic EIR for the average uh, uh, Carmel uh, Mountain Ranch uh, resident to say, what the heck is that about? I'm just concerned about, are we gonna have neighborhood serving retail? Are we gonna have first time home ownership opportunity, low income housing, question, 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 right? If we can, as a city, address that and take on that responsibility, allow you all do what you do best, which is to say retail should go here, industrial should go there, uh, then I think we're, we're in the lanes that make the most sense for us. Um, I think often this has to um, also be about infrastructure and making sure that these uh, we are getting developers to pay their fair share for the infrastructure costs that they experience or that their projects may uh, cost. You, I think you may know updating community plans are also an opportunity to update the facility financing plans so that you're not charging 1985 fees in 2021. This is, uh, again, another reason for urgency on updating community plans. Um, and I guess the bottom line on this, Eric, is that in the budget that I intend to propose on Monday, we will not be making any reductions to the planning department or any significant reductions to the planning department, because as you, communities like yours are seeing more development interest, we need to make sure that you have the professionals that are there to be able to work with you to make sure that we're advocating correctly with applicants to get the projects you want. And again, update those fees so that we have the cash to make sure the infrastructure comes to make sure your quality of life is preserved. That's the broad outlines. We could probably have a very lengthy conversation about this, uh, and I'm yes. happy to do that. 
um, and maybe uh, you, me, and Marnie can do that because I know there are some very large projects planned for your area. Um, right. But those are that's the broad outlines. Keep the plans updated. Keep the financing plans updated so we're getting our infrastructure dollars. Stay uh, open as transparent as possible. Um, and Marnie, I don't know if you have anything to add on that, but th those would be my initial reactions. Yeah, no, thank you, Mayor. And, um, you know, Eric and I, we've been talking about this for a while. And, you know, when I started campaigning, a lot of these proposals to come in and a lot of the infill development was already in place when Mark Kersey was still in this office. So I know I'm coming to it halfway through and I won't cross that line because I may be voting on this, so I don't have to ever accuse myself. But, you know, fire safety and evacuation is always going to be my number one concern. You know, having grown up in Scripps Ranch, my parents almost lost their home on Sunset Ridge Drive, so Sunset Ridge Drive in the 2003 Cedar Fire. So I have been talking to any developer who proposes or is currently working in the D5 area, what are you doing about evacuation times? Because as Eric probably remembers, and many people on this call, it took almost an hour and a half to evacuate folks from Carl Mountain to the 15 freeway in the 2007 Witch Creek Fire. I have talked to the fire department. I know evacuation plans are different and we have new technology and they won't be as bad before, but I'm just glad to hear that everyone is, acknowledges that it's a huge risk for our community and um, making sure that we have the infrastructure. Um, Mr. Mayor, like you said, I'm the chair of the Active Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. I took over from Mark Kersey's shoes and um, we have an incredible team at the city who really wants to work on making sure that we do have the build out of the infrastructure we need if we're going to increase development in our communities, which we also understand we need. You know, I mean, I, I tell everyone I'm I'm 38 now and I'm a lawyer and I can't afford to buy a home in Scripps Ranch, the community I grew up in. You know, it's uh, because I can't afford the down payment. And a lot of our teachers can't either, our police officers, our firefighters. And so working with them, our public service professionals to try and figure out first time home buyer assistance for them or down payment home buyer assistance would be really great so that we can keep our the folks who serve our communities living in our communities. And, you know, we're doing our part also in Scripps Ranch. Uh, it, you know, it's another school board jurisdiction, but where the Scripps Ranch Academy used to be, they're now building housing and a lot of it will be uh, by right affordable for teachers, which is great because our teachers really are some of our, you know, first-hand work or frontline workers for us. So um, Eric, keep in touch. I think the biggest thing for us to do is really keep in touch with our office and with the planning commission because the community's voice is so important. And so making sure you were heard in the process is going to be a big part of, of how we do this going forward. So, And that's what right. we're, that's what we're most concerned with is that it somehow become a more collaborative process because we are caught a little short in that our community plan has not been updated in 30 years. And so now it's kind of being updated for us by developers, and we just don't want to get caught flat-footed and 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 um, you know wind up being a hodgepodge community. We 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 would like to continue this discussion with with both of you for sure. It would be much appreciated. Awesome. Me too, Eric. Thank you so much, Eric, for that question. So we'll be moving forward with the next panelist. Um, we have Wally Wolfeck. He is the chair of the Scripps Ranch Planning Group. 